Hi everyone. In today's update video, I wanted to go through a few news stories and talk about what's really going on. We've heard news of a second moon, apocalyptic meteor showers, a coming pole shift, and so much more devastating solar flares. I actually have 12 different uh, news stories, 12 different things that we're going to be looking at today, but I'm going to go through them really fast. Uh, first, I'm going to provide a preview for this week's sharpening report that's going to be on CERN. And by the way, if if you want the episode right now, you can get the full video, not just the first half that we put for free on YouTube, but you can get the full video right now, early access at dailyrenegade.com. The full video, the full sharpening report episode will not be available for free on YouTube or Rumble. The first half will, but the rest is available right now at dailyrenegade.com for a subscription of only $10 a month or $100 a year. And if you can do it, get the $100 a year. It's cheaper in the long run. You get two months for free. Also, if you view today's update video uh, on, if you're viewing this right now on the Daily Renegade website, you'll find a PDF that you can download that has all the show notes and the information contained in this video. Easy to download, easy to read, easy to follow along if you want all the information. Um, also, if you're viewing this for free on YouTube or Rumble, please subscribe and make sure to click that bell to turn on all notifications. I've gotten a lot of people say that they are subscribed, but they thought they were subscribed, but YouTube has unsubscribed them. So make sure you check that out uh, and make sure you are subscribed with all notifications turned on. Okay, that being uh, said, let's discuss about CERN uh, to begin with. So the question comes up, is CERN opening a portal with their Large Hadron Collider device? There clearly have been some strange events around CERN and even some alarming quotes from some of their higher-ups. Uh, for example, CERN science, uh, science director Sergio Bertolucci is actually quoted as saying if they are ever able to breach through to somewhere else, to other dimensions, that unknown unknowns might actually come through. And it's also been on the CERN website that among their goals is to discover, probe, and map out unknown dimensions. So that begs the question, is this even possible? And if so, how close are they? Well, in short, the Large Hadron Collider right now the world's largest and most complex machine ever built, actually doesn't do anything that natural cosmic rays uh, are already doing as they enter our atmosphere. So this means that if CERN were able to create a portal, there should be portals opening every day, naturally, in various places throughout the Earth's atmosphere, uh, and clearly we have no evidence of that. Uh, therefore, at least for now, as far as we know, CERN can't open a portal, as far as we know, uh, at least not by uh, the way that they're colliding particles, because again, those same particles collide in our atmosphere all the time, and as far as we know, the atmosphere is not full of demonic portals opening all the time. All right, let's talk about an animal attack prophecy. Did you know that animal attacks are actually uh, on the rise in our day? And why is that important? Well, there's a prophecy in Revelation 6 about people getting killed by animals. Uh, and believe it or not, there's a strange connection to uh, CERN in, in this prophecy, but I'm going to save that for uh, this week's uh, sharpening report about CERN. So look forward to that or go to Daily Renegade and watch it now. Um, but there's a prophecy in Revelation 6 about people getting killed by animals. So is the increase that we're seeing today just a birth pain of the total fulfillment that will come in the tribulation? Revelation 6, 8 says, So I looked and behold a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And, the, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and hunger and death, and by the beasts of the earth. Well, since the 1950s, Animal attacks have been increasing. It's, it's actually getting so bad that between 2021 and 2022, animal attacks increased by 19%. And in that same time period, the number of animal, lizard, and insect bites increased by 16.7%. It's almost as if the beasts of the earth are getting more agitated the closer we draw to the time of the tribulation. So could this be an example of a prophetic birth pain, an increase in a type of uh, prophecy that's ultimately going to be fulfilled in the future? That's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's talk about a magnetic pole shift. Have you heard about this? Is, is a magnetic pole reversal prophetic? Is it happening? Well, a magnetic pole reversal doesn't mean that the planet will actually flip upside down. That's not what it means. Instead, it's just speaking of the magnetic field. So 
something called the South Atlantic Anomaly is a section of the Earth's magnetic field showing signs of significant weakening. It covers the space of most of South America and the neighboring oceans. Uh, this area has already fried satellites and endangered astronauts. And uh, the International Space Station ha had to be fitted with extra shielding because of this problem. Um, laptops in uh, space shuttle flights have crashed, and the Hubble telescope has to turn itself off every time it flies through this area. It's even thought this area is to blame for the destruction of Japan's most powerful X-ray observatory. Now, what would a magnetic pole reversal look like? Well, imagine that. Imagine that, but all across the globe. Uh, th this is what it would be like while the poles are reversing, and there is some evidence to show that might be happening. Uh, the South Atlantic anomaly has been growing ever since we started measuring it in 1958, showing evidence that we might be in the beginning stages of a, of a magnetic pole reversal, which may end up being the cause of some of the prophetic planetary changes we see in uh, the book of Revelations, and we might even see birth pangs of that before that. So it's good to be prepared. Uh, just imagine if all if, if, if the electric grid went down today, how long can you survive with the things that are in your house right now? Uh, that's something I think we all need to ask ourselves. Speaking of which, solar flares are another concern. Now, experts theorize that we're due for a massive solar flare. So a solar storm, which is now called the Carrington event, struck the Earth on September 1st, uh, 1859. Now, the following day, the northern lights were seen farther south than ever recorded before. Well, we live in a time now where solar, uh, uh, where aurora borealis is being seen in places that it normally wasn't before. Um, so back then, telegraph operators reported getting shocked by their equipment and seeing arcs of electricity sparking due to the powerful electric currents flowing through the wires. Telegraphs were able to send messages without being plugged in because the atmosphere was so charged. Uh, surges caused the telegraph paper to combust. Um, this event caused widespread global outages, but imagine if that happened today. They weren't as dependent on technology back then. Today, millions of people would be without power and unable to use their phones or other devices. Satellites, electronics would be fried in the baking industry. ATM and credit card uh, transactions, the transfer of funds and banking messages, they all travel through satellites. Widespread communication loss would be inevitable. There would be utter chaos. Now, is it possible that God will use a solar flare to bring about prophetic events that we read in Revelation? Will we see birth pains of solar flares and power outages prior to the tribulation? Well, again, let's say, what if that were to happen? How long can you survive with what's in your house? Very, very important. Um, you know, another another birth pain that, that we've been seeing um, is how nations rising against nation. Now, there's an often overlooked prophecy that really describes our, our time very well today. So when talking about the end times, Jesus in Matthew 24 says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, that's important because we're seeing all of these signs increase today. We're going to talk about earthquakes next, but let's focus on how nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, kingdom against kingdom means actual governments and countries, so we, we get that. But did you know that nation against nation in the original Greek actually means ethnic groups? It means that the topic of race will be the focus and racial groups will be against racial groups. So ask yourself, does that sound familiar? Don't we live in a time and a place where, unfortunately, race is viewed as the most important human trait and tensions uh, are rising exponentially because of it? And if that doesn't describe our day-to-day, -day, I really don't know what does. But that's why it's important to know these prophecies so we can avoid pitfalls associated with them. Uh, one of the other prophecies in that verse was uh, about earthquakes. Earthquake prophecies. Well, Matthew 24, 7 tells us that a prophetic sign of the end times is earthquakes in various places. There are more earthquakes being recorded uh, today than ever before, and they are increasing. Now, the reason for this is politicized. Some say it's because of climate change. Others say it's because our equipment to measure earthquakes is better today, so by default, we're recording more. But probably the most simple answer is that, yes, earthquakes are just increasing all over the world. Think about it. Our technology is better today than 100 years ago, 
But how much better is it than just last year or the year before? I'm sure we're not replacing earthquake detecting equipment every single year. So if we keep seeing an increase in earthquakes, yet they're using basically the same equipment that they've had for five or 10 years or so, then there's probably just more earthquakes and it has nothing to do with the equipment. Matthew 24, eight tells us that these are just, just the birth pains and that there's more to come. Uh, each of those prophecies, even more intense versions, are found throughout the book of Revelation. So will we see smaller versions of other prophecies from Revelation before the beginning of the tribulation. Now, now here's a weird one. Uh, you might have heard that we're getting a second moon. So have you heard this, that this news that we're getting a second moon for a little while? Well, there are some things about this that they're not telling you. And in typical clickbait fashion, the headlines would have you believe that the earth is getting a second moon that you'll actually be able to see at night. But the real story, unfortunately, is not exactly as the headline describes it. It's not as exciting. First, this isn't really a moon like the one that we're used to seeing. This is actually called a mini-moon, which really is just an asteroid. And it's only the size of a city bus, so you will not be able to see it with the naked eye. Uh, also, it's it's not... It's only going to orbit the Earth for about a month in November before flying back out to the solar system, so it won't even have enough time to complete a full orbit around the Earth. Um, third and last, uh, this isn't as rare as we might think. In fact, um, these mini-moons, they happen almost every year. In fact, this is so common that some researchers claim that Earth always has a mini-moon out there somewhere. Uh, so in closing in the mini moon department, watch out for those clickbait uh, headlines. And, and another another one, another one that's come up is this uh, meteor shower. So a new study suggests that millions of space rock fragments, which were ejected from the 2022 collision between the asteroid Dimorphos and NASA's DART spacecraft, could be on a collision course with Earth. And if, if you listen to the headlines... You know, on the surface, that sounds really bad, almost apocalyptic. But are the headlines telling us the entire story? In short, no. <laughs> First, the space fragments themselves are incredibly small, and they will not pose a, a threat to life on Earth. Uh, also, the, the fragments won't begin to enter our atmosphere, where they will burn up long before hitting the surface, uh, until another decade or so. So we got a while. Um, third, and maybe most interesting, is this could trigger the first ever human-made meteor showers. Now, while that's certainly big news, and it is a first ever event in human history, all the information we currently have on it shows that this does not pose a risk, and we will not see the effects uh, until another 10 years or so. So, as always, I'll keep you updated if anything uh, changes. Concerning the economically unstable times that we live in, it is a great idea to convert some of your savings into real money. Now, there is a big difference between real money and what we call money, which is actually just currency. So our dollar is currency, which fluctuates. Real money, on the other hand, like silver, for example, is a store of value over time. The best way to think of it is like this. If you had saved $1,000 in cash back in the late 60s, the late 1960s, that $1,000 would still be $1,000 technically, but it would buy you significantly less today due to inflation. Now, if you had saved that same $1,000 in silver, back in the 1960s. Today, it would be worth around $28,000. So one of the best ways to protect your purchasing power is in real money, more specifically, silver. You can buy and have the metal shipped discreetly to your door, and what most people don't know is that you can actually convert your IRA or even a 401k into physical silver, rather than having all of your life savings tied up in the paper fiat system which is subject to hyperinflation. Go to dailyrenegade.com and click on the Cornerstone Assets Metals banner. This is the only company that I personally trust with this kind of thing. Click on that and sign up to get your free silver report today. One of the financial experts will speak with you to find out the best way to protect your savings going forward in these uncertain times. Speaking of space news, if you only believe what the headlines seem to suggest, 
You might think that the James Webb Telescope has recently discovered signs of alien life out in the cosmos. Some even go as far as to say the telescope has detected city lights similar to what is seen on Earth from space. But, of course, when you get past the headline and read the actual story, the truth is a lot more mundane than many originally thought. So an exoplanet called K2, uh, K218b was discovered to have a hydrogen-based atmosphere and is located in the so-called habitable zone, which is an area of a solar system, any solar system, far enough away yet not too close to the central star that if an exoplanet were found there, it could potentially support life. But of course... Distance from a star is only one of many, 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 many prerequisites for life. But this is usually how these stories are sold in order to increase excitement and interest in exoplanets. Because that's ultimately, that's how they get funded. In reality, the James Webb Telescope detected possible trace amounts of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS, in the exoplanet's atmosphere. On Earth, DMS is known to originate from microscopic marine creatures like phytoplankton. Uh, but even researchers working on this project admit that they're not sure if the readings are accurate because the signal from the telescope is incredibly weak and the results only show up when looking at it in certain ways. So in short, they're really not sure if they found anything at all. Uh, now, you probably noticed in the headlines too, there, there's always things about aliens. Oh, there's always a, a new claim of a possible discovery of alien life. So speaking of the fascination with discovering aliens... How should we as Christians react to all of the alien propaganda nowadays? Recent surveys show that American adults are more likely to believe that extraterrestrials are visiting Earth than to believe in God as he's revealed himself in the Bible. A 2012 study from the National Geographic Channel found that 36% uh, of Americans believe that UFOs exist. The same percentage said they believe that aliens have visited Earth. 77% said there is evidence that Earth has been visited. To compare, the Barna Group found in 2017 that while 73% of American adults call themselves Christian, only 10% have a biblical worldview. A third of America's adult population, about 81 million people or so, believe in ET, and only 10% of us, about 24 uh, million believe in God as the Bible describes him. So in other words, doctrinally sound Bible-believing Christians are outnumbered in America by ET believers three to one. And this is why it's so important for Christians to get involved in the conversation around aliens and not shy away from it. I mean, after all, we have the true gospel, but they have an ET gospel. So what is, uh, what, what is the difference between the ET gospel uh, and the biblical gospels, and why do both exist today? Well, we live in a nation that has rejected the concepts of sin and salvation as obsolete, a belief system that offers salvation without sin, or the stress and effort of, of defending it, uh, is perfect for people like this. The E.T. gospel sells because guilt feels bad, thinking is hard, and the only sin in a postmodern world is telling someone else that his or her worldview is, worldview is flawed. Doctrine in this ET religion is built upon scraps of evidence, some of it contradictory, and since there's no central office to enforce orthodoxy, believers are free to read into their gods just about anything that they want. Christians, on the other hand, believe in a deity who told us his, uh, his followers, who told his followers to love God with all their hearts, souls, and minds, and who sent his son Jesus Christ to take our penalty of death from our sins unto uh, himself. That's the difference between the alien gospel and our true gospel of Jesus Christ. And again, this is why this topic is so important for us Christians to understand and contend with. In fact, even with something like alien abductions, it's actually pretty easy to debunk some of the claims and uh, not necessarily to show that they didn't happen, but to show that while these abduction scenarios may be taking place, that they're probably not aliens, they're not extraterrestrials at all, but are likely demonic in nature. For example, many alien abductees claim to have intrusive medical procedures done on them by aliens while aboard a UFO. These medical procedures are usually incredibly painful, uh, even leaving physical abrasions the next day. Now, we humans are able to perform medical procedures without causing any pain. Uh, things like anesthesia can be used so there's no suffering or memory of the procedure at all. 
And these can be done without leaving abrasions and scoop marks that ab abductees have reported. Why, then, would technologically advanced ETs need to take the individual aboard the UFO, subject them to all sorts of torturous experiences, and leave them with the, evid with the evidence to show something had actually happened? Even when they try to erase their memories, that's often flawed because a lot of times, as some people claim, they can be reclaimed. We, you don't get that with anesthesia, though. Well, the likely answer is that these beings are malevolent, uh, and they wish to leave enough evidence for us to know something happened without giving us solid answers. This is the same tactic used throughout history against humanity by ancient false gods and demons, and even things like cult leaders. People like cult leaders have capitalized on this. Just give enough information, but don't give it all. Um, and and so th that's that's what builds fascination, builds excitement, and we see that with uh, with the ET fascination um, today. Uh, so th those are the stories, and and you know, in closing, since much of what we talked about today has a claim in some kind of root of science, it begs the questions. Can can it begs the question? Can Christians really trust science? Well, this is why I believe it's important for the church to have at least a base understanding of these things. You know, we should not want scientists nor physicists, whether involved in the occult, atheism, or anything else apart from biblical Christianity, to define our doctrines for us. However, we also should not want to run from their scientific findings altogether. There's there's a difference here between an observable fact and a subjective interpretation of what that fact means for the rest of us. In short, we don't want to follow Darwin and let a biased interpretation of scientific observation dictate how we believe, but we also don't want to follow Rome and imprison Galileo for proposing something scientifically unbiased just because it's different than what we're traditionally used to. There is a fine line to walk here between ignorance and fear, yet if we don't fall into the extremes of either side, the journey can actually be a uh, pretty exciting, enlightening, and even enjoyable one. Um, let's take that uh, a step further since we discussed CERN earlier. Why should Christians be open to quantum physics? Well, first of all, because it's part of God's creation. It helps us better understand the complexity of God's design. And this understanding can lead to a fuller grasp of some of the more supernatural things written about in the Bible. Second, it can be used as, uh, as an apologetic and witnessing tool. If you are attempting to defend your faith or share the gospel with somebody who already has an understanding of some of the theories surrounding modern physics, then it definitely helps to be able to speak to them in terms that they can understand. And this is especially true in providing answers from the Bible to questions that come from a scientific worldview. And third, because it's just fascinating. I mean, the idea of a reality beyond what we can physically experience is a belief that falls right in line with biblical Christianity. Why wouldn't we want to know more about that uh, if we have the opportunity? And that might bring up the question, well, what about teachings that come out of science like the multiverse? You know, is the multiverse with different versions of each of us today biblically possible, or does that idea negate God completely? Well, if it was ever proven, it would only show that God's creation is far more complex than we originally thought. But wouldn't that mean that there are different versions of us that aren't saved? Yes, if that's true, but while the other you might look and sound like you, they would still have a separate spirit and soul. This does not negate your personal free will because you still have the choice to do whatever you want, even if the other you chooses something different. Now, I personally don't believe in that kind of multiverse because I don't believe infinity can exist in physical reality. And, you know, they say there's an infinite number of universes. I don't believe that. Um, and uh, nowhere does scripture tell us that God created reality like that. But it also doesn't really contradict uh, de depending what's being claimed. If scientists ever did discover a parallel universe, I don't think that should shake our faith at all. And, you know, th this is why we should uh, learn to study these things, be open to them, not immediately jump to, to, to you know, rash decisions on what we're uh, going to believe, uh, but actually look at it and see if it conflicts with the Bible. If it actually conflicts with the objective facts that are in the Bible, then obviously you throw it out. Uh, you, you throw out the alternate theory. You don't throw away the Bible, you keep the Bible. But if it, compl if it only conflicts with an interpretation, and that interpretation may not be true, and it's not a solid core foundational belief, 
um, then it might be worth at least exploring. So, no, I don't believe in, in the multiverse, at least not in that way. There's a version of it that I think is correct, but, but it's not that. It's not the many worlds interpretation, as it's called. I don't believe in that whatsoever. But if it were ever proven true that there are parallel universes with uh, different versions of us, it wouldn't freak me out and it wouldn't shake my faith one bit. It, would ha it, it wouldn't have any bearing on my faith at all. I might have some questions. Uh, but it, it would just mean again, that there's more out there than we, than, than we know. And we already know that's true anyway, because God didn't tell us everything. Uh, by the way, if you want more on, on that topic and many of the topics we talked about today, a great place to start is to check out my books, Quantum Creation and Cherubim Chariots, which are available now at prophecywatchers.com. Um, and yes, my books are available on Amazon as well, but why would you want to support Jeff Bezos when you can support a really awesome, awesome prophecy ministry that has, in, in my opinion, just does leading work in prophecy uh, today, unlike any other prophecy ministry out there. <coughs> okay, well... All that being said, that is all for today's update video. We went through, I think, 12 stories, if I counted them correctly. We went through uh, 12 different things that are that are in the headlines and um, tried to show how you can't always believe what the headline says. You got to dig into the story, and even then, you got to do a lot of research and figure it out. But if you want, uh, if you want shortcuts on this stuff, just just subscribe to this channel. This is the kind of stuff I do. This is the kind of stuff I talk about, uh, and. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to do these update videos uh, more often. Ideally, I'd like to do them once a week. I know it's been a couple months since I've done one, but uh, I'd like to like to do them a little bit more often. So, okay, all that being said, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the bell for notifications, check out all of the links in the description below. There's a lot of great stuff. Head on over to dailyrenegade.com and get a membership for more stuff like this, for early access, for full videos, and for a community of like-minded believers that you can fellowship with. Uh, it's, it's a really great website, works beautifully, um, and uh, it's a big improvement from what we used to have last year. Uh, so all that being said, thank you so much for joining me today, and until next time, love you all. Uh, make sure you check out this week's Sharpening Report on CERN. Take care, and God bless.